Hi, everybody. My name is Ruham Manzoor, and I'm the managing partner of Maces. Uh, welcome to today's show. Um, today, we're uh, with uh, one of our partners in Japan, um, International College of Liberal Arts, uh, which is part of uh, Yamanashi Gakuin University. Um, and with me from uh, ICLA is Mr. Dan Daniel Kais. Uh, Daniel, did I say it right? Yamanashi Gakuin University? You got that all perfect. You got that all perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, um, you know, today's show is a little different and we are, uh, it seems like we are in wartime conditions because uh, uh, our internet is a little slow and our, um, you know, uh, Facebook has been restricted in several areas in Bangladesh. Uh, so mm -hmm. those of you who have joined despite this, um, very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, so, you know, Daniel, basically how we're going to do this is uh, you know, we're going to have a little bit of a chat and then you're going to be able to show uh, what is so special about ICLA for our audience. And then we will uh, take it from there. Now, uh, Daniel, you don't mm. look very Japanese to me. No, I don't. No. <laughs> where, are you from, going uh, and where are you from? Introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm from Perth in Australia. I've lived uh, in Japan for nearly uh, 11 years now. Um, I've been working a variety of roles in Japan. Uh, it's been a great place to, to build a career. And uh, yeah, currently I work in, uh, obviously in the marketing department of uh, ICLA. And uh, it's been uh, really good because I've got to live in a new area and just get to know what's really great about it and then being able to introduce it to people is such a joy. So. so you're you're based um, out of uh, what what city are you based out of? So I live in Kofu. Um, okay. I'm actually in Tokyo at the moment, uh, visiting a friend. Uh, so this is his belongings and his uh, partner's belongings behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, um, so, you know, what got you to, you know, recruit? And what's, uh, uh, what, what's, tell us about ICLA and, you know, th things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, you cut off there a second, but I think I caught the gist of that question. Um, yeah, I was kind of drawn to it because it is a unique kind of university, uh, you know, offering a liberal arts uh, degree, which a lot of people sort of, you know, don't know what liberal arts is. Um, so it's a, it's a fun thing to explain that. But, you know, it's, I'm actually it's, fascinated with the uh, IC, I mean, you know, the liberal arts programs. And I tell my kids always that, you know, this is something. I think for future, uh, for the next generation, a degree in ICLA is really, really good. Apart from the scientists and the biologists and all that, but you know, a, a liberal arts education really gives the students the tool to sort of succeed or survive in this, uh, uh, you know, um, in, in this world. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, if you could share some, like, you know, a presentation of, about ICLA for our audience, that would be. Yeah. yeah, it would be my pleasure. Um, so let me uh, fire that up now. And, uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Oops. Da, da. And. Oh, here we go. We should be. We're starting at the, uh, the important part. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, just to give, like, you know, a bit of an introduction about Japan, too, as a destination. I mean, I've sort of touched on why it's awesome, but just very briefly, uh, you know, it's very high quality education. Everything is very regulated in Japan. Uh, so it's an affordable and internationally recognized degree. It's affordable for a really important reason, which is domestic students and international students pay the same fees. So, um, you know, it's not like Australia or America or the UK or Canada where the international students are paying three or four times more than a domestic student is. Um, it, obviously, Japan is a very safe country, um, politically very stable. Um, the internet always runs at uh, pretty <laughs> uh, average speed. I shouldn't say that. Uh, but, you know, um, high building standards and very low crime, you know, one of the safest places in the world, really. Um, Japan is internationalizing rapidly, and this is leading to great employability for graduates because Japan's population is uh, declining um, and aging, 
and that's starting to create a lot of skill shortages in many industries. So it is a really good time to come here. Um, and Japan has a pretty open door policy uh, for skilled migration. So, you know, you can renew work visas as many times as you want. It's very easy to transition into employment after you graduate here. Um, and there's pathways to permanent residency. So, you know, it's a, if you want to make a, a career and a life somewhere and you want to, you know, be stable in the knowledge that you'll be able to stay there for a long time, um, Japan is a good choice. Uh, but no, most importantly, it's just an awesome place to live. Um, you know, how it sort of marries the ancient, the modern, uh, you know, the natural and the wow, built environment. Beautiful. This is actually taken about a 30 minute drive from the campus. Uh, actually, it's a very famous spot. Um, wow. You know, here's some other views from uh, the city. You know, we've got the, the Alps. The food is great. The people are awesome. Um, you know, you, you've got big cities and then, you know, you might have just a shrine sort of sitting in the middle of it. You know, it's a real kind of the, the land of contrast. So it's you know, just, just a fascinating place to live. You know, a lot of respect for nature. This is happening right now, actually. There's all the cherry blossoms are blooming uh, in various places around Japan. It's a special time of the year. Very beautiful to see. Um, just to introduce liberal arts a little bit, like you touched on it, um, but it is, it's very broad, it's diverse, it's um, interdisciplinary. It's trying to create you as a well-rounded uh, thinker, um, you know, able to be sort of independent, uh, critical, creative and global in your thinking. Um, it's, you know, got a variety of lesson uh, styles and also assessment methods. So it's not just, you know, sit down, don't ask questions. It's very interactive. Liberal arts colleges uh, and degrees have um, a very uh, important uh, distinction to them, which is uh, two things. One is small class sizes. So focus on small class sizes. At our uh, college, it's 10 to 15 students. Um, and the other thing that's important about it is you don't choose your major before the end of your first year. So you come into the program, you're not actually applying to, you know, a specific one of our majors. You're applying to the program and then uh, at the end of a core curriculum in the first year that widens your perspectives, you then declare a major. So that's really um, beneficial to people who are not, you know, perhaps 100% committed to um, you know, a particular it's area of school. Um, and it also just broadens their horizons. And as you said, because of it, it's so diverse, it really develops people's employability um, because they have those, those problem solving, uh, solving skills. You know, um, they have the soft skills that employers increasingly uh, look for in addition to technical uh, ability as well. Um, we are located um, just a short 90 minute uh, train ride from Tokyo. Um, which is very handy and it's a really beautiful location. We're the home of Mount Fuji, so we get year-round views of Mount Fuji. Um, you know, we have the Fuji Five Lakes area uh, nearby um, and, you know, theme parks and holiday spots and camping spots. It's all very, very awesome place to live. I really enjoy it. Um, so we are offering a Bachelor of International Liberal Arts. We have majors in... Uh, four of them that you pick from at the end of your first year, uh, global business and economics, political science, interdisciplinary art, and Japan studies. 60% uh, of our students come from overseas. Um, we have about 220 students in our program, so 60% of them from overseas. We have Bangladeshi students. Um, and, uh, you know, it, our students are coming from over 40 different nationalities. So it's very diverse. Um, and importantly, it's taught in English. You don't need to speak any Japanese at all uh, to apply for this uh, degree. Uh, we will teach you Japanese as part of the course. Uh, you can take it as an elective. Um, we have accommodation on site as well. Uh, these two towers that you can see uh, are actually 
uh, attached to the main building where we teach in the middle. Those are our dorm rooms. And it's actually mandatory for all first year students to live in the dorm. And that includes the Japanese students. So right from day one, you're making friends with people from all over the world. Um, in terms of our curriculum, we have a huge number of work uh, electives and workshops that you can choose from. The workshops are really cool as well. Um, they're in such things as like calligraphy, uh, tea, you can learn how to do the tea ceremony, you can learn how to play a Japanese musical instrument like the koto, um, <laughs> you can learn about samurai culture, make your own samurai armor as part of that, it's really cool. So lots of different things. Uh, we can teach you Japanese as part of the degree as well, um, coming from absolute beginner all the way up to advanced. Um, and, you know, there is a study abroad program as well uh, if you want to experience another country. Um, here's some views from inside the campus. Very light, airy, as I said, single room accommodation. Um, and you're just sharing uh, bath and toilets with the other students, separated into men's and women's, and there is a cafeteria on site. And if you're really lucky and your room from the dorm is facing the right way, uh, that's the kind of view that you would wake up to every morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this is taken from the campus? That's taken from a dorm room. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's Mount Fuji back there, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, that's a very kind of summer view of, you know, yeah, probably like a yeah, spring or autumn view of, of Mount Fuji. Yeah. So do you so, have to pay extra for that view? <laughs> no, 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 it's uh, luck of the draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, have I got the currency symbol right here? I was not... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not too trusting of this, but yeah, uh, you've got it. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So, um, in terms of our fees, uh, there is an enrollment fee in the first year, it's a one time payment. Um, if you want to accept the offer of 200,000 yen, um, and then our facility uh, equipment and tuition fees are one package, um, they're a little bit under 1.6 uh, million yen a year. Everything on this is payable semester by semester. So just divide that by by two for half a year. Um, and you can see we have the dorm fees as a whole package uh, being 564,000 yen per year. And the meal plan, which serves uh, three meals a day uh, during semester on the weekdays, uh, being about 350,000 yen per year. So, I mean, all up, including your living expenses, you need roughly 25,000 US dollars per year if you don't have a scholarship. But importantly, uh, we do offer uh, scholarships. So we have tuition, facility and equipment uh, waiver uh, scholarships available from 25% up to uh, 100%. And obviously some of uh, students that have come through um, uh, Maces have been successful in um, getting scholarships, as you know. So um, it's based on your academic performance, um, any extracurricular achievement that you have, and uh, your financial need as well. Uh, we're a not-for-profit university. Uh, we are private, but we are not-for-profit. So we are quite generous uh, with scholarships. And uh, yeah, a lot of our students are on you know, a 25 or a 50% scholarship. And to apply for this is quite easy. You just need to um, submit an extra essay as part of your application, which MACES can help you with. Um, we are currently taking um, applications for September 2021. Um, currently, we I will say we are teaching a combination of face-to-face -face and online classes. Uh, we hope that by September 2021 this year that, you know, there'll be vaccine rollouts, that, you know, uh, students will be able to enter Japan again um, and uh, that we can go back to full face-to-face -face classes. But uh, we'll keep teaching online for as long as we need to. And, we you know, we're supporting our students through you know, quarantine processes where they have been able to enter Japan as well. Um, we have another intake. Um, every year in April, 
and we'll start taking um, applications for that uh, probably mid-May and that will close uh, late November this year. Um, yeah, so that's it from me. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> that, was, that was very, very uh, comprehensive and very, um, you know, right to the point. Thank you very much for that, Daniel. And I, you know, there are a lot of questions, but you know, I just wanted to sort of summarize what I learned, and you can tell me if I have been a good student or a good listener. So, first of all, uh, you know, ICLA is of course part of Piano Shiga Quinn yes. um, yes. University. Um, and um, basically ICLA offers uh, the English language programs, uh, well, yes. the programs under Delver English language, including the Global Liberal Arts Program. And um, uh, the two approximately taken, um, which is 1.3 million. And, um, you know, the, the for the basically uh, there is a scholarship um, uh, you know most students who are accepted at least what I have seen uh, through our Mesa's experience. Mm. Uh, is that they get some form of scholarship, uh, which um, you know ranges all the way from thirty percent to hundred percent, and um, the scholarship, man, scholarship basically depends on uh, academic uh, results, um, extracurricular activity, um, So you know, you know, extracurricular activities and um, academics. Academics is the main thing that determines the scholarship, and of course, the English language, yes. uh, IELTS level, and all that. Um, the next uh, intake, of course, is September, and the deadline for that is April 12th. So we have about two weeks uh, to apply. So for those yes, who are uh, listening, um, even though two weeks seems like a very short time, but believe me, if you uh, are listening, um, you know, you can still apply uh, within that deadline. I mean, we are really good at that. Uh, you can give us all your documents. You know, we will, of course, tell you. Uh, you can get in touch with us by phone at 17 You can get in touch with us by email, mail at macesvd.com. You can um, get us get in touch with us on Facebook when the Facebook works. Or even YouTube, you can write your comments uh, there, uh, and we will get in touch with you uh, with the uh, requirements for the application. We have been doing this for a long time, and uh, you know we can help you with your essays. Now, we don't... We, we won't write your essays for you. You will be writing your essays, but we will be reviewing them very closely. And hopefully that will then lead to you uh, getting accepted. And it's such a beautiful campus. I mean, uh, Daniel, you showed the uh, campus a little bit. Now, if you go on to macesvd.com, uh, uh, website, there is a, if you go into the universities we work with, ICLA page actually has the link to a video uh, mm. of the ICLA campus, and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Daniel, did I get most of it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can add a few more days to the uh, application deadline. It's April 16th. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, you're applying, don't wait till like, April 16th. Come to us uh, now within the next five days, 10 days, so that we can help you put together your application. Um, Daniel, we are going to go to questions. The first question is Is there any chance after SSC? Should full no. Unfortunately, SSC is grade 10. If you want to study in Japan, uh, HSC complete kotabe Bangladeshi curriculum hole. So Daniel, I sorry I jumped in and as, answered the question because um, you know I I knew the answer to that. Uh, this is a uh, hey, hello Daniel. Good evening to you. Would you kindly talk about scholarship opportunities at ICLA? Also, is ILTS acceptable? And if so, what are the requirements? Yeah. So you have already yeah, 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 absolutely. So we okay. talked about the scholarships a bit. Yeah, we have 25, 50, 75, 100% um, waiver of tuition, facility and equipment fee uh, scholarships available. Um, there is also, we help you to apply for 
uh, JASO scholarship, which gives you some uh, living expenses for six or 12 months um, when you arrive. And um, there are also private foundation scholarships like Rotary and things like that, that we will tell you about from time to time, and you can apply for those as well. Um, we do have a minimum English requirement, um, which is IELTS 5.5. Um, but we take a huge range of other tests like TEFL, Duolingo, if you did A-levels or IGCE in the past or the IB diploma, we also take uh, English results from that. And, um, yeah, and the Duolingo online one is really cheap and easy to take. That's what a lot of people are doing so, now. So, I mean, our Duolingo actually... Uh, it's only fifty dollars, which is about yeah. four thousand baka, and it can be done from your home. And the results are out, I think, the same day as well. So yeah. that is a really, really good one if you want to apply and you're scared that you don't have enough time to apply or give ILTS. This is a really quick way to go. And for those of you who are given O levels and A levels or IB, uh, you know you don't need it because you are studying in the English curriculum, so you're all good to go. Um, the right. next question is from Ashif Ahmed Khan. Can I take my spouse during my undergrad studies in Japan? Oops. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so we actually have a student from Bangladesh who is married. Um, she, her husband was already working in Tokyo. Um, so the major thing you need to remember is in your first year, for the first 12 months at ICLA, you have to live in our dorm room. Um, after that, you can move out. Um, you would be able to bring your wife over on a dependent visa. And I saw you had another question here. She would be able to work on a dependent visa. You as a student, you can work as well. Um, you can work up to 28 hours a week during semester and up to 40 hours a week during vacations. Um, and, you know, the students, uh, tell me there's a variety of jobs you can do. So there's lots of opportunities. So you can bring your dependents for as an undergraduate student? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's different from our other partners. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, that you can do that. So, um, you know, I mean, you, Asif, I hope you got your answer about that. What are the requirements to take my spouse in Japan during my undergrad studies? Um, I'm not a visa expert. So I, <laughs> uh, I think why don't we do this? Uh, once we are done with this, please get in touch with uh, one of our counselors. Amra uh, Kikurbo, we will uh, find out for you specifically what is the requirement in terms of documents. Normally, if uh, they are allowed to bring spouses, and this is something, of course, um, he has, Mr. Daniel has uh, confirmed, um, you know, then it's usually a matter of showing that you are married by showing that your relationship and of course the funding requirements, so additional Manusha Jurnoja funding. But remember what Daniel said is if you're coming in uh, during the freshman year, you have to stay in the dorms and your wife probably won't be allowed to stay in the dorms with you. So um, <laughs> the best thing to do is would be probably after the first year uh, yeah. then um, to process her uh, visa. Um, and I think he already answered your question about the working. If your spouse is allowed to come, they can work full time um, as an uh, international. Is the campus of ICLA within Yamanashi Gakuin University? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it's uh, not like a satellite campus. Yeah. So it's not a satellite campus. No, it's it's on the. We only have one campus. Uh, the one train station right away from Kofu City. Um, and it's all there. We are um, off, uh, you know, on part on the main campus. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, that's one thing because it's important to be part. I mean, get a campus feel, be part of a yeah. bigger uh, community. So the, the ICLA is a beautiful. I think it's the most beautiful building in Yamanashi Gakuin. But then, of course, you have the access to the whole campus with its. Uh, gyms and recreational facilities and yes. stadium and all of that. Yes, so that's, that's very, very, very important. We have about 4,000 students in total at the university. So it's a really neat, um, neat opportunity, neat community too. Yeah. So um, the next question, I guess you already answered. It's um, Afra Aziz, is ICLA still open for September intake for international students? Can I apply now? Yes, yes, you can, Afra. 
get in touch with it. What are the requirements uh, that one should meet to get the scholarships? And would you mind mentioning about available scholarships over the, oh, wow, well, okay. So this, this happened during our presentation, I guess. So you already covered this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just uh, to say, just to say really quick, there's no minimum GPA for like to apply for a scholarship or to get a scholarship level. Your grades are really important, but it's a holistic review of you and your situation and your motivations for coming to Japan. And based on that interview, uh, which is really important, uh, that you know, they'll make a decision as well. So, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, uh, the next question, I think this is pretty much the last one. What are the employability rate for ICLA graduates? Uh, this is a hard one, Daniel, you know, but take it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to the um, to the extent that, you know, people answer the survey, it's 100%. So, um, you know, about a third of our graduates will stay in Japan um, and they'll work. About a third of them will go home and work and the other third will go on to postgraduate um, study. Um, if there's a big culture in Japan, uh, students in their third and their fourth year, they do job hunting activities and they will send out resumes, you know, to a hundred companies and go through these interview processes, but then they've got a guarantee of employment and they go into the graduate trainee program of a company from they graduate and then two weeks later, they're on a working visa and they're working in a company and they're, you know, starting their career as a, um, you know, Japanese. Uh, this, is, this is actually very interesting because it is so different from anywhere else. I mean, I, yes. I mean, I mean, you know, I, Daniel, I'm going to speak Bangla and English, Banglish, I guess. Um, so, okay. you know, I graduated from America and, um, you know, in the US and, uh, you know, about 20, 21 years ago. And I actually interviewed with 20, 30 companies before I could find one that was going to uh you know sponsor my h1 visa mm -hmm. and uh you know yet the age in that could be interesting to japan uh we've been sending students for the last 10 years now and um on an average our students get three to five job offers before they graduate and and that is like a crazy number and so and and of course there is there is a science behind or a reason behind it it's not like um you know um, you have to of course apply and make that effort but more importantly, Japan has um, an elderly population who are retiring. And because they are retiring, they need people, uh, young people, to fill those job positions. And unfortunately for Japan, but fortunately for us, uh, they don't have enough young people uh, to, to take up those positions. And so, you know, somebody from Bangladesh or, you know, going to Japan, um, you, you cannot... So, you know, uh, because Japan has such a unique culture, I'm um, not to just J.E. you can apply with the Barina, Jack So, you know, uh, for somebody who graduated from a Japanese university, they will understand the culture of Japan. And so through that and, and the language, and, and because of that, they're very easily, they're able to get jobs. You know, one very interesting fact is 85% of the companies in the Fortune 500 that are more than 200 years old are Japanese. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. So, you know, Japanese companies have a really long, enduring life cycle. I mean, they're very, very stable. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, they have all these. And, and, and so they, they do this by understanding the Japanese culture. You know, there is a very interesting concept called Kaizen. And I, I hope, mm. uh, you know, uh, Daniel, you're going to be able to say something about that. And it's yeah. about the, the constant effort to improve upon yourself. And, and, and I think that goes a long way into its work ethic and, you know, the excellence that the companies provide. Right, Daniel? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Kaizen is a big part of Japanese business culture here. Um, you know, always... You know, you have a project and then you have the, the Han Seikai, which is like a the reflection upon it so that you can do it better the next time. And you probably also know about, you know, the Toyota Way, like the PDCA cycle, you know, plan, do, check, act, you know, that constant striving to, you know, iterate and make it better than the last time before to improve customer service, to improve, you know, the efficiency, 
um, to improve the technology that you're offering your customers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really fascinating business culture to work in. It's definitely improved me as a person live, working here. It, it, is, it is amazing to have something like that. You know, I mean, uh, mm. even if you don't work in Japan or if you work anywhere else, to have that kind of a work ethic ingrained mm. in your body through your experiences, I mean, that will, when a personal equity build korar ki, akta manushet bijer skill ta build korar, it act a could be interesting concept, Japan. Last question is from Shaima. Uh, what are the opportunities for business students in Japan? So I guess we're talking about work opportunities. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Look, the like financial services and services sector is the largest employer uh, in Japan. And it's part of the reason that our the global business and economics major is our most popular. Um, probably for that reason, because it does have the clearest you know pathway into um into business um we're actually uh doing kaizen uh, improving our own uh, product always um from this september uh, to meet a, a real need in the uh the labor market uh, we're introducing a data science module so there are no miners in japan um, but what we have is a an eight unit sort of block of electives that you can take um in, during the course on data science. Data, data science. So within yeah. the, uh, the College of Liberal Arts, I mean, uh, the, the degree, and uh, you can get into a data science. So that is something, you know, yeah. uh, economists made a um, statement that data is the oil of the 21st century. And, and you know, <laughs> data, it's all about data. So if you have a yeah. degree in data, getting a job anywhere in the world is going to be easy. And of course, in Japan, it's easy anyway. So, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, that, that's great. And that brings us to the, uh, you know, last point. We've got our old friend, Nathan. Saying, hey! Uh, shout out. Hey, Nathan. <laughs> um, you know, you know, for, you know, Nathan used to work with one of our um, partner universities. And, and so he's been a very, very good friend for uh, years. And I hope to catch up with him. Um, so that, Daniel, brings up to our at the end of our show. We want to keep it between 30 and 40 minutes, so this is very sweet. Um, so any last words for people who are interested in applying, like, uh, you know, what they can expect and their experience, anything else? Yeah, I'm, I'm, the one thing I'm, I'm sure most people are a little bit worried about is the situation with the pandemic and, you know, should I apply, should I wait? I would say, look, don't put your life on hold. Um, worst case scenario, you would be doing some online classes for a number of months before you were flying out to Japan to study. And that would be sometime in your first semester, maybe in your second worst case scenario. So don't, you know, feel that um, the world is never going to go back to normal. It really will. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, you know, it's, as I said, I'm I said I've traveled today. Um, life is pretty much normal here. Just everyone wears masks, um, but there's very few limits on your personal freedoms or ability to travel or just enjoy life. It's a, and look, it is a great place to um, to live and to work and obviously to study as well. So we look forward to, um, you know, welcoming as many of you as you know, we can to Japan in the future. Um, with that in mind, we've come to the end of uh, today's show. Um, those of you who have watched very patiently, thank you so much. I hope to um, see you again soon, uh, Daniel. And um, you know, if mm. you do want to apply, please get in touch with us. You can email us, mail at macesbd.com. That is M-A-I-L at M-A-C-E-S-B-D dot com. You can call us at 017-556-6001. Uh, you can message us on Facebook. You can um, comment on YouTube and we will get back to you. You can also visit our website, www.macesbd.com and hope to see you and help you through this. You know, we find, this is a very big privilege for us. We love what we do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a very big privilege for us to be part of so many students and their journey. So, um, you know, um, we, we really love doing this. We don't have any fees. So you don't have to worry about that because most agencies, uh, you know, they have fees. So uh, it's our services are completely free of charge. So we will catch you on the next session. Uh, our next session is actually tomorrow. Um, and, um, you know, uh, at, at 9 p.m. Bangladesh time. 
Uh, with that, we say uh, goodbye.